Welcome to our ADM Lucid automation testing channel. We will have a series of talk about Selenium automation testing, which will help you understand the basics of Selenium and also guide you to build your own Selenium automation project. You may access our test project and guide in the description below. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for any new videos and updates. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some interview questions that you might come across about Selenium. And so hopefully through this video, we can answer these questions and you can get a better understanding about the overall general understanding of Selenium. So the first interview question is, what is Selenium? So Selenium is an open source testing framework used for automating web applications. It provides a way to interact with web elements, perform actions, and validate the behavior of web applications. Selenium has web browser capa capa uh, cap capability with Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and HTML unit. Selenium also has multi-system uh, capability with Windows, Mac, and Linux. Selenium works well with multiple programming languages such as Java, C Sharp, Python, and JavaScript. For more information about Selenium, you can go to the first video in our YouTube channel called Introduction to understand a better understanding of Selenium. So a second question that you might come across is explain the different components of Selenium. So first in Selenium, you have the Selenium web driver, Selenium grid, and Selenium IDE, which are the main components of Selenium. So what is Selenium Web Driver? Selenium Web Driver is a powerful open source tool for automating web browsers. It provides a programming interface to interact with web elements and provide actions on a web page such as clicking buttons, filling forms, and navigating between pages. Next, what's Selenium Grid? Selenium Grid is a part of the Selenium suite that allows you to run tests on different machines against different browsers in parallel. It enables parallel test execution and distribution of test scripts across multiple machines, making it a valuable tool for reducing test execution time and achieving faster feedback in the continuous integration and testing pipeline. Next, we're gonna talk about the hub and node architecture. So in Selenium Grid, there is a central service uh, server called the hub, and this manages the test distribution to various machines known as nodes. The hub receives test requests and delegates them to available nodes based on the specified criteria, such as browser type and platform. For more information about Selenium Grid, please visit video 19 on our YouTube channel. Finally, What's Selenium IDE? Selenium IDE is a browser automation tool and integrated development environment primarily used for automating web browsers. It's a Firefox and Chrome browser extension that allows you to record and playback interactions with a web page, making it easier to create automated tests and scripts for web applications, testing, and web scraping. For more information about the Selenium IDE, please visit video 20 on our YouTube channel. So that's the second question. Now, a third question that you might come across is, what are web elements and their locators? So in the context of web development and testing with tools like Selenium Web Driver, web elements refer to the various components or elements that make up a web page. These elements can include text boxes, buttons, links, checkboxes, radio buttons, dropdowns, images, and so on. Interacting with these elements is a fundamental part of web automation, and Selenium Web Driver provides methods to locate and manipulate these elements on a web page. How can Selenium Web Driver locate the web elements? Well, it uses locators, and here I'm going to show you how you can find some different locators about web elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our website. So I'm going to go to the home page and then I'm going to go to the web elements website. And so basically to find various elements of a web element, 
or find various locators of a web element, you right click the web element and you click inspect. And this will allow you to see the different locators about the element. And what else you could do is you could right click this and you can copy and it allows you to copy element, copy uh, XPath, selector and full XPath. I'm going to go through each of these one by one. So first what you can do is you can uh, copy element and when you copy element, I'm going to open a uh, clean uh, empty notepad. This is what you've copied. You end up copying the ID and then the type of element it is and so on. And with this ID that you get from copying the element, you're actually able to use Selenium Web Driver to find this specific element on the web page using this locator. And so I'm just gonna pull up some code that I showed in previous videos right here. Uh, for instance, this password element, we use driver.findElement, and then we use the ID, which is pword. But in our case right here, the ID will be file one. You can also locate elements based off of other things as well. For instance, you can go to here, click copy, and you can find it by its CSS selector. And once I've copied the CSS selector, you can paste it here, and this is what the CSS selector is. And likewise, with what we saw earlier, you can use the web driver to find the element using the CSS selector. Well, uh, some other things as well. There's also the X path, and I'm gonna copy that, and I'm just gonna paste it here to show you. This is what the X path is. And again, you can find the web element using the X path, and we also have a full X path, which sometimes it works better when there's duplicates in the X path, or when the X path isn't working, then you can use the full X path to find the specific element. Aside from this, there are some other information about the, lo or, uh, about the elements that you can find. For instance, if I want to go to this text box here, I'm going to inspect it and I'm going to copy or I'm going to open it here. There's some other elements that you can find uh, about the web element. For instance, you can find its class, which locates elements whose class names contain the specific search value. So, for instance, if we look through this inspect code here, uh, we can find here that this specific thing has a class called pb-3-3, and you can find the web element using this class tag. Aside from the class tag, you can also look at some other elements uh, to find the web element. But the ones that I mentioned are the most common locators used to find web elements on a web page. Next, I'm going to talk about what's the difference between find element and find elements, plural. So find element, singular, it is used to locate the first occurrence of a web element on the web page. If the element is not, is not found, then it's going to throw an exception. Whereas find elements, it's used to locate all occurrences of a web element on the web page. If no elements are found, it returns an empty list. So for example, I'm going to show you this website called theweathernetwork.com-ca. Up here in the header, all of these have similar web uh, tags, and I'm going to use that property uh, in find elements later to basically locate them. So I'm going to show you an example. Right here. Right here. And basically, in this example right here, we use find elements and we use the tag li. And I'm just gonna run this. So when I run this, it 
essentially it basically it finds all the elements on the web page with this tag and returns it as the following list on the other hand for example this right here web element password where we use find element without the s it only finds that one web element on the page okay next another question could be what are the types of weights supported by web driver and so there are three main types of weights that we've talked about previously explicit weight which allows your code to halt the program execution or freeze the thread until the condition you pass resolves there is also implicit weight where the web driver pulls the dom for a certain duration when trying to find any element and finally there's also fluent weight and this defines the maximum amount of time to wait for a condition as well as the frequency with which this condition is checked for more information about uh, different weights in the web driver check out the video selenium automation commands 2 on our website or on our youtube channel okay next question how can we type text in a text box using Seleniums? Well, you can do that by using the dot send keys command in. And so I'm going to find an example of where we use that. Uh, and if we look at uh, this right here, We're going to find a dot send keys right here where we basically use dot send keys to send Edmonton Alberta into the text box. Okay, next, if you want to find the title of a web page, then you can use driver dot get title to find the web page. Okay, next, how to assert the current URL of a website? Well, to get the current URL of a website, you use driver.getCurrentURL, and this will return the current URL of the website. Next question is, how to upload a file in Selenium Web Driver? And to do that, what you can basically do is, I want you to look at right here. So in order to upload a file in Selenium WebDriver, first you have to locate the locator for that web element, and then you want to send keys as the directory of your file. So that's how you upload a file in Selenium WebDriver. Next question is, how can we launch different browsers in Selenium WebDriver? And for that, I want to show you this bit of text, uh, this bit of code, right about here uh, right here and for here we see that we're able to switch between the different web drivers uh, in the browsers for example Chrome Firefox and Edge by using this argument right here and uh, for each of the different browsers we have a different options and for example, we have a Fire Chrome options here, we have a Firefox options here, and we have an Edge options here. So that's how you can switch between different browsers in Selenium Web Driver. Next, how do we handle alerts in Selenium? So I'm going to show you another line of code here to show you how to handle alerts in Selenium. And what we mean by alerts is, for example, after you click a button, a pop-up comes up and you have to accept the pop-up before you can continue. And so to handle those alerts, you can use right here. Basically, after you click the button, for example, in the example I just told you, um, an alert might pop up. And basically, you can use driver.switch to dot alert dot accept or dot dismiss, however you want to do it, uh, to handle that alert. Okay, so the next question is now how to use window handle and handles. And so I'm going to show you some other lines of code right down here. Right about here. And right here, basically, it uses 
windows.gethandles to get the different tab names in your, uh, in your browser. And then it makes it into array. And then it allows you to switch to the different tabs in your browser based off of those handles. Okay, the next question is, how can we get a text of a web element? And this is very straightforward. It just involves uh, this line of text here uh, of code that I'm going to show you uh, right here. And basically, all you have to do is you have to use the dot get text tag right here on the element and it will return the text. Okay, next we're going to look at how to capture a screenshot in your web driver. And so this will basically involve uh, a little bit more 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 code and so what you can do is you can go to uh, I'm gonna show you some other code right about here Just gonna show you right here and I'm gonna go to screenshot here and right here this function here it basically allows you to take a screenshot in your web driver and some things you have to specify is you have to specify the, um, for instance, the driver that takes a screenshot. Uh, you also have to specify the destination you want to save the screenshot at. And other than that, it just follows this, the straightforward process. Next, we're going to talk about how to implement data-driven testing in Selenium. And so this is a little bit more complicated. So I'm actually going to refer to you uh, to video 11 in our channel on YouTube. But in general, there's three ways to perform data-driven testing. The first is using an array, which contains the data. The second is reading a CSV file containing data. And the third way is basically connecting to a database so you can retrieve the data. And the final question we're gonna cover in this video is how do you perform drag and drop operations in WebDriver? And this is another straightforward uh, concept. Basically, you want to grab two different locators. The first is the locator of the element you want to drag. And the second is the location you want to drop, drop the element at. And you can do that right here through this. So first, we define the two locations. And then we used dot drag and drop to perform the action. And so that concludes this video where we covered about 16 different interview questions that you may be asked in an interview. There is some other videos on our YouTube channel if you want a more in-depth coverage of the different concepts covered in this video. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for listening and we look forward to seeing you next time.